So welcome tonight to our team training and inspiration. I'm really excited tonight because a little bit later on, we're going to have Tamara Holloway. And she, I don't know if you've watched any of her training videos or her diamond documentary, but I love this lady. She's super humble. She's super down to earth. She's been with the company for three and a half years. And so she has a lot of experience, a lot of longevity, and she's someone that, um, has been able to sustain and have this amazing team over time. So I think that that's a great example to learn from. And I sent her like 10 questions from what you guys had sent me. And she said she's going to get through as many of those as she possibly can. But in the meantime, I wanted to draw you guys attention to the scoop that came out today. And it literally just came out in your email. So I want to encourage you guys um, to read those emails when they come out, the scoop, because there's some great information in there. And the thing that I wanted to talk about really quick was the action pack update, because I know a lot of you have been waiting to get your email or your text and you haven't seen it. I've um, heard from some people that it's ended up in their promotionals folder. It's ended up in their junk mail folder. So you can check all those folders. But in the scoop today, here's the update. It says, um, this is as of today at 11.30 a.m. Pacific time. Everyone who registered for the Big Reveal live stream event now has access to order their action pack in their back office. So that means every person that registered up until registration closed early, early Sunday morning has um, access to that. So you find it by clicking on your shopping icon, and then it should be at the bottom of the shopping page. Um, if for some reason you registered and you don't see an action pack in your back office, in this email it says you need to email plexusbigreveal at plexusworldwide.com. So that's, that's your go-to if for some reason your action pack is not showing up. And I would encourage you guys to let your teams know this so that if they registered and they don't see it there in their back office on the bottom of their shopping list of products, um, that they send this email in right away with their ambassador number, their name, and the subject of the email should be Big Reveal. Here's the other part is some of you have gotten your email and your text, but you haven't ordered your action pack yet. And they're getting close to being sold out, actually. So I want to encourage you to not hesitate and to let your team members know that um, the action packs are almost sold out. So make sure that they go and do that soon. And just to clarify what's in the action pack, you get two full-size bags of Slim, four trial packs. Um, three of them are three-day trial packs. One has Edge, one has um, Accelerator, and one has Block. And then a seven-day trial pack of Slim. And then the 25 brochures about Slim, which are really awesome. I know a lot of us have been sending out a lot of samples, either for the seven-day challenge or single samples. I've been putting that brochure in there um, with every single one. And you also get that cool water bottle. So I want to encourage you guys to get that. Um, there's a, there was a great idea that's been going around and, and shared. Um, if you are someone that didn't register for the big reveal or you have an ambassador come to you and be like, how can I get the new Slim? And they didn't register for the big reveal. Encourage them to find a friend to join them, to join Plexus as an ambassador because the only people that can get new Slim are new ambassadors and people that get the action pack. That's it this month. Not our customers, not existing ambassadors that did not register for the action pack. So encourage them to find a friend to join and get the double welcome pack and then they can keep half of it so that they can have the new Slim and their friend can keep the other half. So that's, or they can get, you know, the, the double slim accelerator action pack, for example, and then that way they can try the new slim. Um, let me see if there were some questions here. Oh, thank you, Emily, for typing that out. Um, so there's, you're, you're not out of luck because, you know, this is a great way to get those people that have never shared to maybe share a little bit if they really want to try the new slim. Everybody knows at least one person, guys. Everybody knows one person that needs our products. And so this is a great opportunity to encourage those people to go silver or to get one person to join them. We don't have a date yet, an official launch date, because really this slim, this was a pre-launch. And so there is no official launch date, but I know that these action packs are flying off the shelf. So make sure to get yours. Um, the other thing, oops, somebody's got a lot of feedback there. Um, the other thing that I noticed in the email that's kind of fun in the scoop email that I want to encourage you guys, I'm trying to find that person to 
Sorry. Um, looks like they muted themselves. The other thing that I saw was this fun little contest that they're doing. And this contest is, uh, I tried the new Slim. And if you upload a video of yourself trying the new Slim, or you have an ambassador or, or a customer or somebody that wants to upload this video, and again, refer back to your scoop, but if you upload that video and you get the most video, the most likes on your video, you win one of every single product, like one of everything. So I want to encourage you guys to do that because it'd be so simple. It's just a fun, easy thing. You upload your video. It's very self-explanatory from the scoop. And it'd be really fun to have somebody from our team win that. And they'll probably show it at convention. So one more announcement. Convention registration ended yesterday, right? Was the 15th? Yeah, yesterday was the 15th. So registration is closed. However, last year, we did notice that they had some registration open at the event. And we did have some people that went to convention and were able to register at convention. Now there's no guarantee, but say for example, you have an ambassador that joins in the next couple of weeks and they're fully on board with the business. Yeah, okay, great, Kristen, thanks for sharing that. So you have somebody that's on board, really wants to come. It doesn't matter how new you are. Honestly, guys, last year, Emily and I, we went with, what, 10 or 15 people. Pretty much everybody was silver. I think some people weren't even silver. Maybe we had a couple of golds. Like, everybody was brand new. And, um, you know, people came that hadn't registered, and they were able to get registered. Just encourage your newbies, if they're excited, to come with you. We still have some people that are looking for roommates that needs somebody to share a room with. We have a convention page up. If you're not in that, just let your sponsor know so we can make sure you're in there for all the announcements and everything. But we're really, really excited for that. I'm still encouraging you guys to register if you haven't. It sounds like it's not too late. So um, I think Tamara was able to hop on here. Let me, let me see. I thought I saw her. Are you there, Tamara? Was that just me? No. Okay, she's not here. <laughs> I thought she was. Um, <clears throat> okay, so if you haven't registered, it's still open. I know that um, going to these events is a sacrifice, and it takes time, and it takes money, and it takes um, effort, and finding childcare, and all of those kind of things. Trust me, I know. I'm having to, like, figure out what to do with my kids for the week, but all these little sacrifices that you make um, to your personal growth and to growing your business, it's an investment. And I just ha personally had this aha moment about um, our business the other day, and it was about how, you know, we really are all each small business owners. And as a small business owner, if you owned a traditional business, you would be investing a lot of capital into your business lots and lots of capital, like $3,000 to $30,000 to start your business. And sometimes I feel like because our investment is so low, $34.95, we don't actually treat ourselves as if we are true small business owners. But if you treat this as a true small business and you invest in your business and you invest in yourself by reading good books, going to trainings, going to convention, earning leaders retreat, all of these different kind of things, you are going to have a rocking business. Your business will definitely take off. But if you never invest anything in your business, you're going to struggle. So I want to challenge you guys to invest in yourself, in your own training, um, and invest in your business because you really are a small business owner. So um, I swear I saw Tamara there. Yeah, she's on. Okay. I don't know why I'm not seeing her, but I'm going to change the view to speaker view. And um, I see Emily there. Do you guys see me or you see Emily? I don't know. We see you. Okay, all right, good. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna introduce her a little bit and I introduced her a little bit on our team page. So she is someone that's so impressive to me. I watched so many of her training videos in the beginning. She's been with the company three and a half years. 
So she has that experience and that longevity. She is still like at the top, you know, all the time and still growing her business three and a half years into this. And that's what I want to learn. That's what I want to be. And where I want to be three, four, five, six years from now, I want my business to still be growing. She's a mom of two. She was born in California, but raised in Arkansas. So she's got that great Southern accent. And um, I have sent her a lot of questions and she's going to get through as many of them as possible. She just hopped off another call to be with us. And we so value your time and appreciate you being here tonight. So thank you so much, Tamara. I'm going to turn the time over to you and unmute you here. Right. Well, hey, everybody. I'm so sorry that I'm late. Has anyone ever experienced technical difficulties? <laughs> we had a live opportunity event tonight and the host of the event was out at the lake and her service was super spotty. Um, she couldn't remember her password for us to log in to another account to get it going. Y'all, it was a complete mess. We started 25 minutes late. <laughs> so I'm crossing my fingers that the event is still going. They let me speak first because I told them I had to come to Brick Hemingway's all-star team and share a little bit with you guys. Um, so like she said, my name is Tamara Holloway and I'm a diamond ambassador. I've been with Plexus just a little over three and a half years and I'm so honored to be on this call tonight. This team is amazing. You guys are incredible crazy momentum and it's just so exciting to see you guys just flourish and bloom and work hard and hitting that leaderboard and it's just such an honor to be here tonight. So um, a little bit about my story. When I joined Plexus, uh, I was not looking for a business. I was looking to drop about 20 pounds of baby weight and <laughs> I had seen a lot of posts about Plexus. I'd heard a lot of great things about it. And so I started doing some research um, and I was in Target one day and I was strolling my little girl around. She was two years old at the time. And this sweet lady, I say sweet, this lady approached me and asked me when my second baby was due. And there was not a second baby. And so I thought, okay, the research is over. I am ordering that product tonight. <laughs> and without even thinking about it, I was already networking and doing network marketing because I had convinced my neighbor to order the big welcome pack with me and kind of have a contest on who could lose their baby weight the fastest. And so I did. I signed up as an ambassador with no intention of working the business, but with every intention of dropping that baby weight. And guys, I didn't even tell my husband. Um, Brooke asked me to keep it real, and I told her I'm always real, but don't take notes on this. I did not tell my husband that I was ordering these products because, honestly, we weren't in a financial situation where I should have been spending money on those products. So I took my Slim, and I hid it in my chest of drawers and, like, put scarves over it. And then when he would get up in the morning <laughs> to take um, a shower, I would get up really quick, shake up my pink drink, and, like, pop back in bed, and I could, like, Hey, what's going on? I'm just waking up. Um, and after two weeks on the product, he actually called me out and said, there's something different about you. Like you just seem happier, more motivated. I've noticed you haven't had a migraine in like two weeks. And that was a huge deal for me. I was a chronic migraine sufferer. I was on two different prescription medications for migraines and I had not had one in two weeks. Now that doesn't sound like a long time, but it was for me. I would literally, I was the kind of person that would literally make plans with my friends. And the next thought was, I wonder if I'll actually get to go because what if I have a migraine again? They happen so often. And so when he said that, I confessed everything. I told him all about what I was doing and how excited I was about Plexus. And he was super supportive. And so I decided to put myself out there and share with a few people. And I got my first paycheck in the mail. It was $240 and I was ecstatic, like doing cartwheels in the kitchen. I was so happy because my husband was in full-time school and I was doing mystery shopping like for, for dinner for us a lot of nights. And, and remember this is before Plexus, but like Papa John's and um, Wendy's and Arby's where I would get our meal for free and also earn like 15 or $20. And I was doing that to help us make ends meet. And so you can imagine how amazing it was for me to get a $240 check with just a handful of customers. So guys, I didn't know how I made that money. And so I looked at the compensation plan that night and something just clicked and I called up my sponsor who was a total stranger by the way, but that's another story for another time. And I told her, I don't know about you, but I'm going to be a jewel in this company. I'm going to Maui. I'm getting that Lexus. 
like, I don't know if you're coming with me, but I just want to let you know. <laughs> Eight months later, I ranked to enroll and our lives have been forever changed. Um, network marketing was something I had done in the past and didn't have a great experience with. And so I was skeptical going in. Um, but when I saw what this comp plan could do for me and for my family, I knew that I could make it happen and make it work. And so I got into massive activity and here I am today talking to you guys. <laughs> Brooke, do you want me just to look at some of these questions you gave me and just kind of no. start going? No, I can ask you the questions, but I love your story. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. And we have so many people that say that their biggest problem is that, you know, everybody they talk to says they don't have money and they can't afford it. And so I think you coming from that perspective, I mean, they're always asking you, what should I say? How do I get past this? Do you have any great tips for people on how do you get past that cost objection? Mm -hmm. You know, I do believe that some people, you know, who are we to say what someone's financial state is? So I do believe that some people legitimately have um, a cost issue. But what I believe more times than not is you spend money on what's a priority to you. So if your health is a priority to you, if your desire to, you know, get whatever health issue you're dealing with is a priority, you'll find a way more times than not. Um, another example of that, I have a gal on my team who I messaged and followed up with for three years and her objection was cost. It was, she did not want to spend money um, on these products. She didn't believe in them. She was skeptical. I mean, I could give you every excuse. Well, we, one of the last times we talked before she joined, we talked about I can tell you easily how to get the cost of your products covered, like within your first month. And I gave her a game plan of how to do that. I just didn't say words. I showed her how we could make it happen. Well, she joined and her first paycheck was over $300 and her second paycheck was $800. And so she's blown past getting her products covered. And now she's like, why didn't I do this when you asked me three years ago? Cost, what was I thinking? And I'm like, that was your reality at the time. But look at what you've done and what a testament when people tell you that, that you can say, I thought the same thing. I felt that way. Exactly. Let me tell you what I did to overcome that. And so that would be uh, my first thought is, is it a priority to them? And if they're giving you that excuse and, and you don't really believe it's legit because maybe they post on Facebook, they just, you know, bought a Louis Vuitton that could be exaggerated, but you know, something along those lines. Um, then try to get down to the real objection. What is it? What is it? What is really holding them back? And guys, I ask people that. Um, if they tell me, for example, oh, I'm going to order, but then they never do. They tell me again, I'm going to order, but then they never do. I will say to them, Okay, let's be honest. Friendship first. This is not about me selling a product to you. Friendship, relationship first. So tell me, be open with me. What's really holding you back? And then a lot of times you get that real objection, what they're really nervous about. And then you could address that head on and get further along in building on um, them joining or signing up to be a customer. Yes. Someone said you address the elephant in the room. Emily, yes, absolutely. Yes. You have to ask why, and that's so hard when you're a newer ambassador, but if you never ask why, you'll never know. So I think those are such great tips. Like show people exactly what to do. Show them the way, just like we script for people, you're going to show them step by step. This is how simple it is to get your product paid for. Um, sorry, that's my son getting ice from the ice machine after I told him no ice, no ice. Um, how about if you could go back to when you started as an ambassador with Plexus, what would you tell yourself? And also, what do you think you would do differently for our newer ambassadors? Yeah, um, a couple of things come to mind. And I love that I don't have these scripted answers for you guys, because I'm just going to speak with what comes to my heart and comes to my mind. Um, the first thing I think of is bringing people on board and not truly investing in them before I went and looked for my next level one. I was so determined to grow, grow, grow fast, fast, fast. I got to get everybody before while the getting's good, so to speak. And I would bring someone on. I might send them an email. Um, I might add them to a team page. And then I was off looking for my next level one. And I learned pretty quickly that my attrition rate was growing as quickly as my new business was growing. And so I knew I had to nip that in the bud and spend time with people 
coach them to success, lock arms with them. Um, at one point in my business, uh, literally my attrition rate, I was, I was even on the leaderboard at this point. And at one point, my business was one of the fastest growing in the company, but my attrition rate was just as fast. And so I started doing three-way calls with every new ambassador that my level ones brought on. Um, and so I just did a massive kind of overhaul with my team and said, okay, when you bring a new ambassador on, these are the things we're going to go over in our three-way calls. Let me know. And I'm, we're going to welcome them. They're going to, I'm going to be someone that's another connection point to them an encourager, a support. And y'all, those changed my business. I know three-way calls are kind of a buzzword um, now in, in Plexus. Um, a lot of teams do them, but back then when I started them, I didn't know what that looked like. I just knew that if I could connect with people and build a relationship, that they were much more likely to stick around. And that's, that was true. And so it's not just about a three-way call. It's just having a connection point to you and to your upline. Um, there are several people that are my adopted level ones now because someone signed them on my team that ended up quitting six months later or even a year later. And now they, I've literally had them say to me, if I didn't know you, I probably would have quit too. But because I have a relationship with you, I know that I can come to you for support and training um, and coaching. So that's kind of a long answer to answer that question. But all that to say, invest in your people, invest in them, guys, train them, make sure they have people to follow on Facebook that are inspiring and have great, you know, savvy at social media, make sure they get plugged into YouTube channels. Think about the people that inspire you in Plexus they're likely to inspire your new ambassadors as well. So get them training from different YouTube channels, people to follow, um, add them to the team page, plug them into whatever your uplines are offering. Um, I know like the seven day groups and um, new ambassador orientations, make sure they are plugged in, show them why they're a priority. Don't just say, hey, you know, I'm gonna tag you on this post. No, message them say, you have to be a part of this. Like this will change your business. It's all about passion, guys, and confidence and really pouring into those people you bring on board. Okay, I told Brooke I get really long-winded. I love okay. it though, I love it. So I had someone ask though, so this is kind of a good segue, with so many level ones, it sounds like you have a lot of level ones and I, I, we've got lots of people that have a lot of level ones. How do you keep track of them and give them the support they need in taking their products? Did you have a certain system or along the way, have you come up with a good system so that you don't lose people? Yes, I definitely did not have a good system for a long time, <laughs> um, but I realized quickly, again, a lot of the things I do now, guys, are from mistakes I made in the past. Um, I call it failing forward, you know, making a mistake, picking myself back up and figuring out I have to do something different. And so I have a list of wholesale ambassadors and I have a list of business building ambassadors. And then I have another list of people that um, I'm wanting to really invest in and coach them to their next rank you know, a senior gold to a ruby, um, a senior ruby to an emerald and so on and so forth. And so I kind of a lot different times for different groups of people. My wholesale people, you know what, I probably talk with them maybe, maybe once, once or twice a month, um, you know, a check-in or they ask me a question like, hey, you know, I've been seeing all the posts about the new Slim, you know, how, how are you liking it? How can I order? Like they aren't even engaged enough to where they're really focused on building a business. They have no desire to build a business, they're not paying attention to the team pages, so on and so forth. So I probably only chat with them maybe a couple times a month. Um, but my business building people, I have a kind of a rotating, you know, clockwork where I'm reaching out to people and sharing with them and you know, making sure they're sending me their goals, um, revisiting their why. I did a big challenge a couple months ago about revisiting your why because I think people can easily kind of lose sight of that. Um, and you know, they write something down maybe at the beginning of their business, but they don't really ever revisit it. And we have to be so connected to our purpose in building a business. If we want to continue to grow through setbacks um, and disappointments, we have to have that why that just drives us forward. So, you know, things of that nature, um, with re revisiting my business builders. And then when I say business builder, I, that's even a difference to me than a runner. Okay. I consider a runner someone who is all in. They're doing their IPAs day in and day out. They're messaging me. They are constantly wanting time with me or Tamara, can you do a live on my team page? Tamara, can you do a coaching call with me and my three new, uh, my three new ambassadors? They are just, they're running with me in this business. Those are the, the most fun to work with. Um, and so I'm talking to them without any type of schedule. It's a day-to-day -day thing. 
Um, I've talked to all my jewels, you know, my level one jewels, most of them, um, uh, you know, three or four times a week, some daily. So I think the best way to organize that is to know who your wholesale ambassadors are and who your business building ambassadors are and who your runners are. And then you're going to treat them according, you know, to where they are in their journey. Brooke, you've disappeared. Yeah. So hopefully. Oh, am I okay. here? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, no, I agree with that, that it really just depends on the type of ambassador that they are. And I would say I do the same thing like with my wholesalers, like once a month, unless they're having some kind of issue. Um, so that those were great tips. So since you've been doing this for, you know, three and a half years, a lot of people are wondering, how do you keep your, your network growing and new? And how do you keep your team and your leaders excited after three and a half years? Yeah. Um, I heard someone say at a Bloomingdale shopping spree, I think it was the first one I earned. It was three years ago. Um, I was at Brand New Sapphire. And I remember someone saying, I think it was Helen McFadden. She said, network marketing really comes into play when your network has gone cold. In other words, it's really about building a new network and finding new people that are cold and making them your warm market, right? And so, guys, I'm super super intentional about building new relationships. I mean, I'll get involved, you know, in a neighborhood Bible study or, and not just for the, not just to earn plexus, you know, people in my funnel, but to make genuine friendships and, you know, getting involved in a new church or, you know, inviting someone that my daughter goes to school with their mom on a play date. Um, anything I can do to continue building relationships is so important and I'm super intentional about it. Oftentimes when I hear people say, I feel stuck. I just don't know, you know, what, to, where to go from here. I feel like I'm tapped out. I always ask them, how are you expanding your network? How are you growing your network? Guys, I have strangers, um, or I had, they're friends now, but I had strangers join my team that I had never met before. Um, Christy White, she's a diamond on my team. We met on a, um, a site. It was like a direct sell site and I friended her. Um, we did like a buy and swap group where, you know, someone might buy from Pampered Chef and then Pampered Chef would buy from Mary Kay and then Mary Kay would buy from Plexus. And we just kind of had this rotating thing where we supported one another. And let me tell you, I didn't want any of the products I bought, but I did it <laughs> to build relationships and I did it to hopefully have potential rock star try my products and building that rapport with them. Well, Christy and I were in a group like that together. I friended her on Facebook and we began to form a relationship, just an acquaintance. And she posted one day, she needed something different in her life. And so I messaged her immediately and said, can I share plexus with you? I just, I really feel the nudge to share plexus with you. She said, yes. I talked to her about it. She joined my team. I met her six months later at convention for the first time. Um, I have several stories like that. I have a girl that I met on Baby Center. Um, when we had you know kids born around the same time and we formed a friendship about how terrible our babies slept at night <laughs> and friended her on Facebook. I sent her a trial pack. She's an emerald on my team. Again, it was the second convention I went to, we met six or seven months after she joined me at convention. So there, don't limit yourself. Don't put yourself in a box. Figure out ways to get outside of your comfort zone and meet new people. Guys, most of us are meeting new people all the time at the gym, at the park, at church, maybe strolling our baby or walking our dog around the neighborhood. Um, I've I have been known to walk up <laughs> to people in their yard that were sitting out on the lawn watching their kids play ball and just start a conversation. I have friends because of that. So you just have to get out of your comfort zone and be willing to do that and ask yourself, am I willing to step out of that, that warm and fuzzy comfort zone and, and make a difference for my business and meet new people? Because it's all about people, guys. If you don't have a growing funnel of new people, you at some point, you will get stuck and you will find yourself stagnant. It's true. And I think it's hard for introverts because I have some introverts. I'm an introvert as well. And I think it's hard for them to actually want to do that. And the way that I think about it is that there's this whole sea of people out there in the world that have what we what we that need what we have and so it's expanding your heart and opening your heart to other people and other relationships and it's to me it's not a weird thing now to friend people that I didn't know before because you know they're just regular people like you and I 
And you never know whose life you're going to change just by opening up your network. So I love that. I've done that. I've just started doing that myself as well. And it does work, guys. It really does. Um, Okay, so here's a good one. I like this one. Can you share with us a time you wanted to quit and what you did to push through? And have you felt like quitting more than once? And maybe you haven't ever felt like quitting. I don't know. Oh, I have. <laughs> um, it was actually on my road from silver to gold that I really struggled. Um, I feel like going gold was one of the hardest ranks for me. Um, <laughs> on my way to silver, I probably, or on my way to gold, excuse me, I probably thought about quitting at least 10 times. Um, you know, I had excuses like, this is too hard. This is just, you know, I don't know enough people. I only had about 300 Facebook friends when I joined Plexus. And so I knew to build my business. Obviously I had to build my network like we talked about. Um, but that I use that as an excuse for, for a while. Um, and so <laughs> there was actually a gal who joined right around the same time I did guys, like within a day. And she went silver in like three days. And I'm telling you, it seemed like she went gold in about 18 seconds. Like, I was like, who is this girl? What is she doing? She has 43 level ones. She just went gold in two seconds. Like, what is going on? And I compared myself to her like no other. And I know y'all heard the phrase, comparing is the greatest thief of joy. But let me tell you something, not just the thief of joy, it can paralyze you. It can absolutely paralyze you. And so until I laid down those excuses and really got my mindset right, I was stuck. And so um, I had to get my mindset right and realize that this is my journey. I had to look for my people and I had to quit looking over here at her and I had to quit looking over here and just move forward. Um, since then, I don't feel like I've had problems with thinking about quitting. I've definitely had days where I struggled. I've definitely had days where I looked at myself as a leader and thought, I'm not adequate enough. Um, and I knew that I needed more personal development um, because leading my team is one of the most important things to me in my life. Like I want to be effective for them and lead them well and with integrity and passion and um, coach them to success. And you know, I'm one of those people that I never feel like I've arrived. It doesn't matter where I'm at in this company. I never feel like I've arrived because I have people on my team who have some big goals and some big dreams and I won't stop until they hit those. Um, so all that to say, if you feel just stuck or like you're contemplating quitting. This is what I'm going to tell you. I don't, I don't like a lot of tough love, but I don't know people super well, but I'm going to say it. <laughs> if you're contemplating quitting, you haven't fully committed yet because commitment is the most important thing you can do before you build a strong business. You have to commit. Um, I have a story that I'd love to tell y'all, but for sake of time, you know what? I'm going to tell it. There's a story of the chicken and the pig and um, this, the chicken and the pig were super great friends and they were taking a, a stroll together one day and the chicken says to the pig, you know what, we should start a restaurant together. Why not? And the pig says, okay, that sounds like a good idea, but what will we name it? And the chicken says, how about we name the restaurant ham and eggs? And the pig says, ham and eggs? Are you kidding me? No way. You would be merely involved in that business, but I would be committed. I love that story because all too often people think they're committed because, you know, they're doing things here and there. They're posting on Facebook like they've been told and, you know, they reach out to maybe someone every once in a while and um, they're involved, but they haven't committed because commitment leads to consistent activity. And of course we know that activity leads to success. So you've got to commit before you can build a strong business. And when I was thinking about quitting, I hadn't fully committed. I had one foot in and one foot over here um, behind me that was like, mm, I don't know, I'm not sure if I, if I can do this. And I think that the driving force of that was my fear of failure. I was afraid, what if I fail? What if I can't do this? And so when I laid down that excuse and I laid down that fear and pushed past that, that's when I committed. Yeah, I think, um, I think too, like Stephanie Abrams did a little live on one of our training pages today. And she was talking about how a lot of times we don't make progress forward because we're not ready for it. Mm -hmm. And God knows that we're not ready to handle the success that he wants to give us until we've done some more growth of our own. And I believe that too, until we're ready to receive that, 
then we're not going to get that. And if we're not fully committed, we're not going to get that. Um, so another question about sacrifices. So I know the sacrifices I made to get to where I got. Um, I think that people are wondering, you know, what kind of sacrifices did you have to make to become a jewel and to become a diamond and for how long? And, um, you know, what does your daily life look like now in terms of schedule and freedom three and a half years into the business? Yeah, um, you know, I realized pretty quickly that I was going to have to make some sacrifices. And one mistake I made is I really didn't get the buy-in from my husband first. And so I want to encourage you, you know, if you have a spouse, um, Carrie at Leaders Retreat, was it Leaders Retreat? She talked about shareholders. And so really you want to connect with your shareholders and make sure you guys are on the same page with what the time that you're willing to give to your business. So that's a mistake I made, but um, my shareholder and I are on the same page now. Um, but I sacrificed a lot of things, guys. I am. Um, I sacrificed TV time. I had some TV shows that I was borderline obsessed with, and it was my downtime. And I chose to, you know, forego Grey's Anatomy and <laughs> focus on my Plexus business. I got up earlier um, than my kids and my family woke up, and I went to bed much later. So I sacrificed a lot of sleep, um, even some events, like just some things that I would get asked to that I didn't really feel like, you know, a lot of value in, but normally I would have said yes to, I said no to. And instead I worked my business. Um, I worked crazy hard my first year of Plexus. Um, I still feel like I worked really, really hard, but that first year it was like nonstop. Um, and so I think, again, it comes down to your priorities. You know, what do you want out of this business? You know, what are your goals? What are your dreams? And are they willing, are you willing to sacrifice for them? Um, so, you know, this, this, this industry is nicknamed the four-year career and it's nicknamed that for a reason because a lot of, a, a lot of companies, and I think Plexus, we have a, a little bit different of a timeline, but you know, we're becoming a seasoned company and it is not everyone is going to fly to diamond in one year's time. It's just not realistic. And so I want you to take that pressure off yourself, first of all. But it's nicknamed the four-year career because the vast majority of people that hit the top of a company or, or dual status, so to speak, it takes them four years. And we live in kind of a, you know, give it to me now type of society. And we can't do that with this business. We have to, like I said, be committed and to be consistent and sacrifice for what we really want to accomplish and realize it may take us a little longer than we hope, or we may hear a few more no's than we wish. But if we stick to the activities it takes to grow, you guys, you will get there. Y'all heard the quote, and the only sure way to fail is to quit. And that's so true. So if you want this, if you have, you know, desires to be an Emerald ambassador, maybe a diamond ambassador, then you've got to go all in, commit and be consistent daily um, and sacrifice daily for what you want. Now, don't go neglecting your family. I'm not an advocate for that, <laughs> but find those hours that you can really work plexus. A lot of people say, set office hours, set office hours. That didn't work for me. I didn't want to be confined to certain office hours, but what I have done is set family hours. So if I have my family hours, it's like, okay, these two hours, my phone is plugged up in the charger. I'm not looking at it. I'm not pulling up Messenger or Facebook. This is my family time. And that's worked really well for me. And you know, guys, I'm not the best at time management. I've learned a lot since becoming a leader. Um, but setting goals for myself weekly, like every Sunday night, having my weekly goals of what I'm going to accomplish. So when I am spending that flexus time, I'm much more effective and my priorities are lined up. And so I'm not as apt to waste time. Yeah, I, I'm the same way. I couldn't do office hours, but I can do family hours, that dinner time, scripture time, bedtime, like that time where I put my kids to bed and that is family time. Sundays are our family time. And so that's worked better for me. And I love, I love that you yeah. talked about sacrifices and you're talking about how you still work hard. I mean, I still work hard. Emily still works hard, but when I look at what I receive and if along the way you look at what you're receiving for your hard work, it makes sense. There's no job out there where you could work one hour a day and make the amazing kind of income that you want to make. So you do have to work for it. And I always appreciated that um, Amy said, you know, this isn't a lottery ticket, like you have to work for it. But 
oh my gosh, the blessings are amazing if you work for it. And trying to balance, you know, at the same time and have that family time, of course, is so important. But realize that you have to commit to it and you do have, there are trade-offs that have to be made. I think a lot of times people reach a certain point and they think, okay, well, it's just automatically going to happen now. And I can just kind of sit back and cruise whether they get to Ruby or they get to Senior Ruby and they're like, well, it's just a matter of time. Well, I think you and I both know that's not how it works. It doesn't like things don't keep growing just on their, on their own. Um, organically, you still have to invest in your business. And I have always looked at it in that four year sort of, you know, career of really working your business. So I love that you, um, you're kind of reinforcing that because we talk about that a lot. And maybe like one more question here, because I know it's getting a little bit late for you. But, um, you know, how have you moved past disappointments? For example, when you have somebody quit that maybe started building a business with you and you thought this person is going to be amazing and they've quit or, um, you know, personal hurts that have happened to you and um, things that have really could set you back or cause you to question what you're doing or be discouraged, you know, how do you move past, you know, those people that quit and, and do they ever come back? Have you had people come back as well? Well, it stings no matter how many times it happens or how little it happens. It always stings. Um, I've had several people that I've brought on that I thought were going to be amazing, like fast track gold kind of people. And they just didn't want it. And I would try and try to motivate them and instill vision in them and encourage them. And then something hit me one day, Tamara, you can't motivate the unmotivated. People have to have that inner drive, that inner desire, that inner determination in order to accept the coaching that you're willing to give. Um, so I was almost at a time forcing myself on people because I knew what they could do but they didn't want to do what I know they could do. And so I had to learn to let go of that and not take it personal and to keep just dripping onto them as in, you know, checking in with them still. Um, I'm thinking of a girl in particular who was a wholesale ambassador for a year and a half, a year and a half. She took her products every month. She loved her products. This girl, if she would have started a year and a half ago, she would be a jewel by now, a hundred percent. So I kept, you know, sending her new information. I'd be like, Hey, Amanda, I read this testimony today. This girl deals with migraines too. I know you've heard my story, but I wanted you to hear this story. It reminded me so much of you. Oh my gosh, Amanda, my diamond documentary is coming out. When you first joined as a wholesale ambassador, I was a gold ambassador. Isn't that crazy? Like just dripping new information onto her. And lo and behold, she messaged me and she said, all right, fine, I'm ready. <laughs> like seeing your passion for this business and how your passion has never weaned, you know, two years in, I, I want this. And so she started working the business. This was about a year ago. She started working the business guys and she has been a little slower um, than she hoped, but she is almost a Ruby ambassador. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, if I had completely written her off, she wouldn't be working the business now. But at the same time, finding that balance of not pouring in and pouring in when I could be pouring in to my runner over here or my new level one who is ready to rock this business, I would take time away from them if I was consistently trying to motivate those unmotivated. So finding that balance between Dripping, you know, new information on them, dripping your passion on them and your confidence in them and your belief in them, but really not investing in them completely and keeping your focus on your runners. And um, have y'all ever heard it said, you know, love the 80%, but spend 80% of your time on the 20%. And so that is what I began to do. And I believe my business flourished even more, but don't give up on people. If you have strong belief in people, continue to invest here and there in them um, because you never know how it can pay off. But the reality is guys on the other coin, there's or the, on the other side of the coin, there's going to be people who never do want this. And that's okay. We have to bless and release those people and keep looking for that new blood that's excited and passionate about building a business and spend your time there. Yeah, I think it's easy to fixate on, I call it the spilt milk, like, you know, fixate on those people that, oh, if they would just see it, if they would just, 
And it's like, you can't force it on them. You have to just keep moving forward. Like you said, just love them. And I like that picture of dripping information on them, but not like being all in their face all the time, just giving them little nuggets to kind of keep their interest going, but not overdoing it. Cause then you can totally shut them down yeah. and then they may never be interested. Yes. And so I don't really know what color I am. People, <laughs> different people on my team think I'm different colors. You're a rainbow. You, <laughs> I'm a rainbow. I think so. It, without any green, I think I'm primary red, blue, then yellow. But anyway, but here's my point. Cause what you said reminded me of this as a leader, you have to meet people where they're at because just like Brooke said, if you're in someone's face all the time, you could totally turn them off. If you're a super intense red and you have this yellow that you still have huge belief in, but you're treating them like they're a red, they're going to do this. So you have to look at that person and say, what motivates them? What would inspire them? And then as a leader, you be that color to them. It doesn't mean you're not being genuine. It doesn't mean you're not being yourself, but you're tapping in to meet, you know, to a certain color personality to meet them where they're at. And that is so important as a leader and not just for these people we're trying to bring on board, but in general, um, we have to meet people where they are at and coach them and train them to who they are. That's our job. And same thing with those ambassadors that we just want to shake and say, if you could just see this opportunity, you would blow it out of the water. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind too, when you're approaching people. Yeah. It's not about you, right? That's what you yep. have to remember. It's really about them and it's really about their color personality. And the sooner you can figure that out, the more successful you'll be at reaching people too. If you haven't read yep. that book, read that book, the four color personalities of network marketing. Um, maybe just really quick in, you know, in closing, we have this new product and it's super exciting. We're all excited about it. Is there anything special that you guys are doing to build excitement and to use this to grow your business? Because this is really a special time in the company and maybe everybody doesn't realize what a big deal it is to have like such a change in a product. So do you have any tips for our team members in building their business with this? You know, what I was thinking about, and, and I did a live about this earlier, is that we have a new chance at momentum. Like, don't miss the wave of momentum that Plexus is in right now. Um, people are more ecstatic about this than I've seen any of the other new products that have come on board since I've been with Plexus. This is a new wave of momentum. It's almost like starting your business over again. Guys, we have made a huge push to bring inactives back. And we have had hundreds of inactives order the action pack or are in line to order the action pack. That is huge because what I'm teaching is get them on this new product. Most of our people that have gone inactive um, were people that just didn't have, you know, super great success on the products um, or, you know, life got in the way, you know, for expenses and they never got back to it, whatever the case may be. But we have made a huge push um, to share with our inactives what's different about this product, why they want to jump on board now, why they cannot miss trying this out and maybe even build a business with it because of this new wave of momentum. And that, so that's what we're really focusing on. Of course, we are still going after new people and new blood and bringing new people on board. But I felt like if there was ever a chance to tap into those people that are not with us anymore, this was the time and this was the chance and it's working. And I'm just absolutely ecstatic about that. And then, you know, also reaching out to my people, you need to do this with your level ones if you haven't yet and sharing with them why they want to get started again, uh, or maybe why they've been, you know, why they've been stuck. This is their new chance to get unstuck and really to make a big push um, in building their business again. And so I've had even a couple of level ones um, that are going to start working it again. They, they see this opportunity and they're not going to pass it by. Um, so I don't know if there's anything special about that, but it's working for our team and we're super excited and momentum is, you know, just continuing through May and hopefully on to June. So yeah, I think that's what we're trying to focus on as well, that this really is an amazing opportunity to excite people again, get those white lines back and people that have had a little bit of a lull in their business business that this is the time and really to seize the opportunity because in two or three months, it's not going to be new anymore, but it's new now. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so you don't wait until next month to have a sip and see or next month to do an event. That's like right. You do, 
you do it now. You do it yesterday, right? Yes, yes. Now. yeah. From now, this is not going to be new slim, right? Mm -hmm. That the excitement will have waned just a little bit. Not that you can't continue building on it, but exactly. it's not going to be like the first 30 to 60 days. The first exactly. 30 to 60 days are crucial if you're trying to reignite, restart. I have sent out tons of samples um, yeah. to ones to new people that I've messaged and to former customers. I expect my PV to be crazy high next month. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm getting those people excited about it. Um, yeah. I'm messaging people that, you know, Plexus wasn't the right time for them. And I'm messaging them saying, you want to talk about this again? This might yeah. be the right time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, because, yeah. So, so you get those lists. Yes. We want to harness that excitement while it's, fresh and new and momentum is crazy. There's a buzz right now about new slim. Yeah. So that, yeah. that would be my, my main tip for you. Exactly. Okay. So one word is just coming to mind right now as we close this call is perspective. And I've just always been a huge believer in having perspective. And so now looking back over three and a half years with this perspective, you probably can't tell us how big your organization is, but maybe you can give us a little bit of a feel of what it means to be actively working your business for three and a half years and the size of your organization and the number of lives that you've changed. And if you had not decided to make the choices that you made all along the way, how that would have never happened. So maybe just bless us with a little bit of perspective to close yeah. out this call. Yeah, that makes me teary eyed, honestly, to think about it because I started and I remember once I caught the vision um, by just sitting down and reading the comp plan. I mean, something just lit a fire in me and I was ready to go. The next month, I, I mean, I remember this as clear as day. I was praying for three people. I just wanted to go silver and I would pray specifically, God, I just want three people. I want to be a silver ambassador. And the last day of that, my first full month, I got my third ambassador and I ranked to silver. And that was a belief step for me. And then to look now, um, I can't tell you how large my organization is. I have about 40,000 um, to 45,000 people in my organization. Um, and probably, I don't know, I'm going to, I think Jake told me my attrition rate. I think I'm about 20, 20 to 22,000 active. Um, somewhere around that. I'm going to check on that to make sure and tell you, cause I don't want to be telling any fibs here. Um, but that, that's my best guess according to, from, from Jake. So to look at that and to know that that faith step, um, has changed hundreds and thousands of people's lives and that I have an influence over thousands of people who look to me, um, to lead them which is why leading them well and effectively is so crazy important to me. Um, I constantly want to be growing myself for, for my team um, is an honor and it's a blessing and it's something that, that God has entrusted me with. And so I don't take that lightly at all, um, which is why I still work really hard um, to invest in my people for them. So that made me wow. completely teary. I wasn't expecting that question, but um, it yeah. gave me goosebumps. It gave me goosebumps because it really is amazing. And it's, I just always think of that compound effect that John Maxwell talks about. It starts with one person and it's, it really starts with the power of three and just having faith and having that belief because it doesn't happen all at once. I, I'm sure that three and a half years ago, you never could have fathomed, fathomed that you'd have over 40,000 people in your organization. Like that's just crazy. So um, you have definitely blessed us with so much wisdom tonight and shared. I love your honesty, your openness. And I know we all appreciate you so much for taking this time out of your night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And we love you. Mwah. Thank you. Aloha. Bye. See you at the kitchen. <laughs> See you there. Thank you so much. Good night, guys. Thanks for tuning in.